Today we're going to talk about Chapter 2, Section 2, which starts with the discussion of SI units, derived units, and prefixes. So first, some vocabulary. Quantity is something that has a size, a magnitude, or an amount. Now, quantity is different from a measurement because a measurement is a unit. A measurement is something like a teaspoon or a gram, whereas a quantity is something that can be measured, such as temperature, which can be measured, or length can be measured. Those are quantities. Weight is a measure of the gravitational pull on matter. Weight is different from mass because mass is the same no matter where you measure it. Weight, however, depends on the amount of gravity pulling on the matter. Then there are derived units. Derived units are produced by dividing or multiplying standard units. For example, when we find area, we multiply a length times a width, so we have meters times meters. So we're multiplying units. Those are derived units. In science, we use SI units. These are standard units, and they were agreed upon in the 60s, and they have base units from which all other units are derived. Our standard unit of measurement for length is the meter. Meter, we abbreviate it with an M. That's different from what we're used to because in America we usually use things like inches, feet, miles. But for science, we're going to use meters. Mass is measured in kilograms. Kilograms are abbreviated kg. Time is measured in seconds. Seconds are abbreviated S. Temperature is measured in Kelvin, and we abbreviate Kelvin with a capital K. The amount of a substance is measured in moles, and we abbreviate moles M-O-L. Moles are something we're going to be talking about later when we um, discuss chemicals more specifically. There's some more standard units. We're not really going to talk much about those right now. Sometimes our standard units aren't appropriate for the item we're measuring. For example, if we're measuring a very long distance and we measure it in meters, we're going to have a very long number with which we express that distance. Whenever our units are not appropriate for what we're measuring, we use prefixes to make the expression of the measurement easier. Start with our unit measurement, one of something, one meter, one second, one gram. That's this row right here, our one, one meter. As we go up, we increase our units by powers of 10. So, the first power of 10, 10 to the first, is deca. When you say you have a deca, something, it means you have 10 of that thing. You have multiplied it by 10. Next is hecto. Hecto means you have multiplied that thing by 100. There are 100 of it. One hectometer is 100 meters. Next is kilo. Kilo means you have a thousand of something. A kilometer. A kilosecond. Then we skip a few powers of 10 and we go to mega, which is 10 to the 6th power, giga, which is 10 to the 9th power, and tera, which is 10 to the 12th power. Going back down to our units, we can actually divide our units into smaller increments by using negative powers of 10. The first negative power of 10 is desi. Desi means we have divided something by 10, basically. So, if we have a decimeter, we have divided that meter by 10. We have a tenth of a meter. Centa, cent, of course, meaning 100. There are 100 cents in a dollar. There are 100 centa meters in one meter. We have divided it into 100. Milla means we've divided it into 1,000. Then we, again, skip a few powers of 10 and go to micro, which is 10 to the negative 6. Nano, which is 10 to the negative 9. Pico, 10 to the negative 12. 
femto, 10 to the negative 15th, and addo, 10 to the negative 18th. We're mostly going to deal with prefixes right here. And as you go up from meter, you are multiplying by another power of 10, times 10, times 100, times 1,000. As you go down, you are dividing by a power of 10. So this one is divided by 10, then divided by 100, then divided by 1,000. So 10, 100, 1,000, tenths, 100, 1,000. There's actually a mnemonic device we can use to remember the six prefixes that are closest, the one that we're going to deal with the most often. And that is, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Each of the letters in our mnemonic device stand for a prefix, except the U in usually, which stands for unit. And remember, a unit can be any unit of measurement, meter, gram, second, etc. K stands for Kilo. The H is hecto. The D is deca. And there's our unit. The second D is deci. E for centi. M for milli. Now we know that each time we go up, we multiply by 10 again. 10, 100, 1,000. And each time we go down, we are dividing by 10. 10, 100, 1,000. Then there are derived units. We use our regular SI units to derive other quantities, such as volume, which is the amount of space occupied by an object and density, which is the ratio of an object's mass to its volume. And look at this word right here. You've got ratio, the word ratio. Ratio, whenever you see that word, you know that you're going to divide. So density being the ratio of mass to volume, is equal to mass divided by volume. Here's how we derive our units. Area is found by multiplying length times width. We measure length in meters, and we also measure width in meters. That means that we have meters times meters, which is where we get meters squared. Volume is length times width times height. All of these things are measured in meters. So we're multiplying meters times meters times meters, which is where we get meters cubed. Density, again, is found by dividing mass by volume. So we take kilograms, which is what we measure mass in, and divide it by volume, which is cubic meters. So here we've really got kilograms divided by meters times meters times meters. Then there's molar mass, where we take mass divided by moles. So it's kilogram per mole, etc. Right now we're going to work with area, volume, and density. We'll get to molar mass in a later chapter.